Welcome everybody to today's uh, online workshop brought to you by learn.wordpress.org. Uh, this is Five for the Future, how to succeed by making ongoing contributions to WordPress. Uh, my name is Courtney and I am joining you today from uh, the island of, o of Oahu in Hawaii in the US. Um, and I am mainly a contributor to the training team these days. Um, and so I'm focused on bringing the community content like this uh, and a, lots of educational content for the WordPress community. And joining me is uh, Naoko, and I'll let her introduce herself as well. Hello, and I'm Naoko Takano from uh, Japan. And uh, I've been working with WordPress um, like uh, Courtney uh, since the beginning as a, a user and a web uh, designer. And then I started translating WordPress into Japanese. And uh, since uh, 2019, I have been a full-time uh, sponsored uh, contributor, uh, working with mostly community team, polyglot team, and now more or less back to community team with this uh, contributor experience in Five for the Future program. So um, yes, I'm happy to hear what you want to know and how you want to, uh, you know, uh, have your contributor journey in this WordPress project. Great. Well, thanks now. Um, so let's get started with our, our content and we'll just dive right in. Um, so we're gonna start with this uh, this comic from XKCD. Uh, if you're not familiar with the comic called XKCD, it's a web comic with a variety of topics, so, but it's largely about programming, math, and science. And so this particular comic is one that we as open source contributors can relate a lot to. Um, the idea behind this comic is that the infrastructure of the web is sustained by open source contributors that are volunteering their time. Um, so this comic is, of course, a joke, but it makes our volunteer contributors laugh because it feels like our reality. So you can see here, like, this complicated, <laughs> you know, all modern digital infrastructure that's just supported by... Oh, just some random person in Nebraska that has been thanklessly maintaining the project since 2003. Um, so this is a, a pretty funny little comic that we wanted to start with. Um, so let's uh, go through this. Um, oh, this is this was in December 2021. So this was a critical vulnerability that was. Um, unveiled in a widely used open source um, Java-based logging utility that was called Log4j. Um, this incident highlighted challenges in open source funding and security oversight. Uh, Post-incident, calls for enhanced collaboration uh, among open source foundations emerged to bolster security measures and tackle vulnerabilities collectively. Um, the global impact underscored the industry's heavy reliance on open source software showcasing the urgent need for a concerted effort in securing open source projects again, against potential cybersecurity threats. Uh, the maintainer of CoreJS, which is a JavaScript library that's vital to many websites, um, including like Netflix. Um, so um, this maintainer voiced his frustration about the lack of financial support for open source developers, threatening to abandon the project or switch to a closed source license due to insufficient funding. Um, despite CoreJS being integral to web development and having been downloaded billions of times, um, his call for financial support went largely unanswered. Um, so that reflected a broader issue in the open source community regarding the sustainability and funding of crucial projects. This is a problem that volunteer contributors are not unfamiliar with. So what do we do to fix this problem? Uh, this is a open source security and risk analysis report that was published in 2022 by an independent company. And this states that 88% of code bases contained components that had no, no new development in the past two years, and they were behind on user updates. 
So this presents serious security issues. Um, why would that be? Think about the many contributors that volunteer their time working on these things. Do they have the bandwidth to keep maintaining these components? This could be one of the reasons why this is happening. Let's talk a little bit about the tragedy of the commons. Um, the tragedy of the commons is what's happening here and all over the open source community. It's a social and political problem in which each individual is programmed to, to act in a way that will ultimately be harmful to all individuals. This comic demonstrates the concept of the tragedy of the commons. There are a lot of people overusing a shared resource, which results in a tragedy for all when the resource gets completely depleted. And so you can see yeah, the examples, like someone's just taking all the water they want, they're not giving back to it. And um, yeah, and then that results in just scarcity and less resources for all. In order for the commons to be sustained, um, it needs work and support from its community. So that brings us back to WordPress. Um, so we've been so far generally talking about open source projects, but let's bring this back to WordPress and I'll hand it off to, to Nalco to continue with this. Thank you. And mm -hmm. as you can see in the uh, quote, in 2014, Matt Mullenberg, the uh, founder of WordPress, wrote a blog post to introduce the concept of Five of the Future to the WordPress community. Um, this was proposed um, as a potential solution to avoid a tragedy of the commons in WordPress. He proposed uh, organizations that has built their companies and products around WordPress to de uh, dedicate 5% of the people to contribute back to WordPress. So this was the concept at the time, but it has been developed into a program now. And we'll talk about that more later. And next. Thank you. And more recently in uh, at the WordCamp US that happened uh, this year in August, uh, keynote speech, uh, Josepha mentioned that there is a significant interest in WordPress sustainability at the community summit. So WordPress sustainability is, you know, how to, uh, this is how, how she described it is that, you know, how can we make sure that WordPress just outlasts any of us, you know, um, for long-term success of the WordPress project, we need to bring in more new members into the community consistently. Next. Okay. And here comes the five to future. So a little bit of the history. So after the Matt's uh, blog post, um, in 2017, at the community summit again in uh, Paris, um, contributors Tracy and Ravesque and Ian Dan uh, proposed the idea of formalizing Five of the Future as a program uh, for the WordPress community. With the help of the community, the program was defined and formalized in 2018. And the first trial run of the program with dedicated teams sponsored by companies happened in, in 2019, which was, you know, right before the pandemic started. And you can access the website uh, by going to wordpress.org slash five. It's a shorthand or five for the future. And uh, uh, you can see this is the program website. And uh, uh, program is an attempt to avoid the tragedy of the commons in WordPress. Um, this is where um, peop uh, where uh, uh, the companies and individuals uh, say that they will co contribute to the WordPress. We call it pledge, and uh, the it's a little bit different from how you contribute uh, in other ways, which, which is more casual and one-off um, way, but it's a pledge and commitment to contribute for uh, a period of time. And uh, um, we'll also share some ideas on how companies can contribute to Five of the Future and some benefits that uh, they can get from contributing. And finally, we will share some ideas where this program needs to go in the future. So I'll hand this off. Oh, no, wait, wait. Uh, is this my part? Oh, sorry. Oh, this is, 
I think we continue or, or you okay, can my, my point. Uh, okay, okay. So, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh so uh we've been talking about five of the future. What is this five for the future contribution and uh what is it so different from anything else? And next. Uh, so as defined in Matt's blog post, any direct contribution to the work of our Make WordPress team uh, is five for the future contribution. Uh, and next page, uh, Make WordPress teams, or you can go to make.wordpress.org uh, subdomain, is uh, uh, teams of WordPress contributors who work together for uh, the WordPress project itself. So it's unlike, you know, you can contribute to WordPress in other ways, but uh, the specifics of um, the five for the future contribution is tied to these teams, working in these teams or working for these teams. So currently there are 22 different contribution teams for the WordPress open source project. And you can have uh, contribution in core uh, design, as I said, translation, um, performances, so many other ones, but uh, you can go to the next page. And um, um, you can you know, still casually contribute to these teams. And the difference between um, casual versus pledged or well, the future commit contribution is that um, as a casual contributor, you do it whenever you feel like it, uh, which is you know, perfectly fine. There's pros and cons. For example, it's flexible and there's low barrier to entry. You don't have to commit. You don't have to, you know, uh, feel the pressure. And uh, if you're, um, you know, you, you can't have a certain amount of time every week, uh, this is a perfect way to make it flexible and still contribute. Um, uh, but the cons of casual contribution is, Think about you know what if everybody is this casual contributors? Uh, there's no consistency or reliability that someone will do something at certain time. You know it's not like work. If you're just volunteering, there's no pressure, which means maybe things don't get done at a certain you know um, time period, um, and uh, they they might not be familiar with the overall uh, objectives or guidelines because they might not have time to um, go through or work with uh, the larger part of the contributor team. So there's pros and cons. And uh, on the other hand, the place to contribution is more consistent because they may be uh, either uh, sponsored like ourselves Courtney and myself or they might have you know a certain set of time uh, with a habit to dedicate let's say even 30 minutes per week uh, that gets things done make sure um, you know you get five things done small you know checklist and it's consistent and accountable and it leads to uh, skill development maybe uh, it's more likely because you do it at a certain pace. Um, you can have a stronger relationship with the team and uh, the, all these two projects sustain the beauty as we talked about. And there's also uh, some things that uh, might be more difficult, which is definitely you need more time to commit, even if it's 30 minutes, even if it's one hour. Uh, that it's a, uh, you know, maybe reason why people don't pledge or commit. Or um, sometimes people love to contribute so much uh, that leads to burnout. <laughs> so uh, this is, you know, needs to be balanced. It's no good about like having too much or too little. So it needs to be a balance. But um, uh, to one more time, um, the screen, just to, go. yeah. So the, uh, part two, I want to emphasize the project sustainability. We need pledged contributors who are reliable and say, I'm going to do this, you know, certain amount of hour per week, consistently, continuously uh, to make this project sustainable because that's, um, you know, work needs to get, be, get done and uh, we need people to spend time on it. And that's where a uh, five future project is uh, important. And next slide. Okay, 
So, uh, so every contribution to WordPress supports its sustainability. And together, what five of the future contributions make a significant significant impact impact to sustain the WordPress project. So when you are you know uh, debating if you should pledge or not or just get started, um, you know we want to remind that uh, it is you know really important for um, in the future maybe to think about this uh, pledge to contribution because that's that that's what uh makes WordPress sustainable. And uh, next page. Um here's uh, just a uh chart of um different types of uh contribution uh in terms of impact. So as I mentioned uh casual uh WordPress contribution is still variable and we need a lot of people to do things uh, like, you know, just to maintaining small things or uh, long-term uh, involvement. And, uh, but five of future contributions towards uh, make WordPress contribution is the highest impact. And uh, um, that's why uh, we like to invite everybody to uh, join this um, new course. Okay. So uh, Courtney will explain how to pledge for the Five Years Future program. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, let's quickly take a look at how you can pledge your time for Five Years the Future. So there are two ways to do it. The first way is to pledge as an individual. Um, if you're an individual contributor, uh, you can add your pledge by editing your WordPress.org profile. Um, I'm curious how many folks here have a WordPress.org profile. Feel free to like use the little hand emoji. <laughs> um, and if not, that's okay. This will this sh we can show you how to do that too. Um, yeah, if you do not have a WordPress.org profile, you can go to login.wordpress.org slash register. Um, and here I'm going to share that link in the chat. Oh, I do see your question, Erin. We'll get to that soon. Um, and so you can go to this link and create a WordPress.org profile. Once you have a profile, there's a contribution tab as seen here in the screenshot. Um, and then you can pledge your time as well as the team or teams, multiple teams if you'd like, um, that you'd like to contribute to. And once you save your changes here, it shows up in your profile. And then the second way to pledge is as an organization. So if you run a company or if you're an entrepreneur, you can pledge to WordPress as a company. And it's the same link that Naoko shared earlier, wordpress.org slash five. Um, and on this site, there's a link for organizations. Um, so you'll see that circled here in red. Um, and so if you visit this link, you'll be able to pledge to WordPress as a company. So something to remember, the 5% is purely aspirational. You do not need to contribute exactly 5%. It's just a guideline. So for smaller agencies, 5% might be tricky, but anything you can is appreciated. Anything, any con contributions you can make. Um, so if you go to this link, um, you'll be able to see that you can actually list your company and you can list the number of folks from your company that you pledge to contribute. And you can add their WordPress.org profiles, and they can specify the uh, amount of time that they want to contribute and the teams that they want to contribute to. So let's show you an example of that. So this is an example of a company pledge. You can add a brief description of your company, and it shows the number of contributors that you have pledged from the company. And it also shows the profile photos or images of the individual contributors. So this example shows a pledge page, which currently shows that each company um, has a certain number of people who have pledged to support WordPress. So it's pretty simple. That's how pledging works. Um, I believe that we have over 140 companies from all over the world. Um, it's always changing. Uh, so all of these companies have pledged to support WordPress. And I'll hand this off to, to Naoko to continue. Yeah. 
So uh, you might wonder uh, why should I page for five to Twitter? And next, please. Um, because contribution to WordPress can help you succeed. So not only it helps WordPress, but there's a benefit of uh, contribution. That's why people do it. Um, and next. So I will um, explain some of the benefits and how it helps you as an individual contributors. Uh, we are going to talk about um, how yeah how we can help uh, individuals and then, then uh, organizations. Next. Yeah, and we'll start with um, with individual contributors. All right, so this uh, is a great article that was published by Justin Tadlock on WP Tavern um, in 2021. And it's titled, Contributing to Open Source is Better Than Any College Degree. Um, those are pretty uh, strong words, right? <laughs> so it, it might not be the truth for, for any everyone, um, but both uh, Naoko and I are living examples of this. Um, you can learn so much by putting your contributions out there, learning by doing, making mistakes, learning to fix them, building things, um, and you're doing this all alongside people all over the world at no monetary cost to you. One of the greatest benefits, in my opinion, is working alongside talented contributors from all over the world. The experience you gain, the ideas you exchange, and the opportunities that you get by interacting with all of these contributors, it's all priceless. Uh, what you see pictured here on the right is a list of contributors for WordPress 6.4. And you could also be a part of a list like this. By the way, this is not all the folks that are contributing to WordPress 6.4. That's all we could fit on this page. When you contribute to WordPress, your WordPress.org profile or GitHub profile becomes your resume. So currently, the uh, Meta team, the contribution team um, called Meta, uh, they are working hard to bring as many contributions as possible to the WordPress.org profiles. They've done a lot of great work. And as a result, any translations a contributor does will show up in your profile. So there's a lot of information there, which really helps anyone viewing your profile identify the work that you're doing. Um, you could definitely write a long resume if you want, but demonstrating that you have open source contributions shows tangible proof of your work, and it really stands out. So when you apply for a job, and especially for a WordPress-based company, when you have open source contributions to show, they really speak for you. The connections you build in the WordPress contributor community are similar to a trusting relationship at work, but many say that there is something uniquely special about collaborating as fellow contributors. Uh, building a professional network of diverse individuals from different experience, age, location, background is not only valuable to your career, but it's also for your personal growth. This here is a very brief contributor journey in the WordPress project. Most, if not all people, start as a user and some move on to becoming casual contributors. Some people pledge themselves to Fi for the Future. Um, when you pledge or contribute consistently, you have a greater chance of becoming a leader or expert in the project. And being that leader really brings you some professional advantages. Contributing can also be especially helpful in this time of economic slowdown because it gives you an opportunity as an individual to become a leader or expert in your field. And finally, on a, uh, a lighter note, um, contributing to an open source project like WordPress makes you a part of the team shaping the future of the open web. You will make an impact you can't imagine by yourself or even through your work all through building the software that runs over 40% of the web.
So we've um, talked about the benefits of Five for the Future for individuals. Uh, so let's take a look at how it can help companies and organizations. As I mentioned earlier, for individuals, open source contributions are a great way to gauge someone's talents and that they do good work. So for recruiters or people that are hiring, it makes their job easier. And when you're in the business of creating WordPress-based products, um, contributing will help you keep up to date on what is happening in WordPress. By contributing to WordPress, companies get a good idea on where the WordPress project is headed, which will allow making better business decisions and uh, support the overall growth of the company. For those of you that run agencies, um, you know what your clients want. You can actually speak for your clients to the WordPress project and you can make changes in the project with your expertise. Um, companies contributing to Five for the Future have uh, a recognition in the WordPress project and can use their opportunities to represent their needs and their clients' needs in the decision-making processes. Companies can also use this opportunity to find growth opportunities along with WordPress. And finally, when your company contributes to WordPress, it establishes your credibility. Oftentimes we've seen many agencies that contribute to WordPress uh, gain more work and clients because they were core contributors or that they've been involved in the WordPress community. So it's definitely a credential, especially for a small agency or company, because when you're involved in the project, it shows the expertise that you have and the results for your business is immense. And so next I'll hand it back off to Nauko to talk about some tips for contributing. Thank you. So um, yeah, um, it's easy to commit or pledge because you can just uh, edit your profile. But uh, the hard part is how to continue contributing and you know motivation and uh, the good practice. So I will talk about that for individuals first. Uh, next slide. Okay, so where you want to get started, just in case this is your first time contributing, uh, is to find your team. Even you know that you have um, some experience in coding, there are many teams that uh, you can help. So finding and knowing uh, what teams are out there and what's the best match would be a great help to find your interest and skill match. So there's a new contributor tool that's uh, at make.wordpress.contributor and you can start um, your journey from here uh, by selecting your skill, interest, and you uh, at the end of this uh, widget, you get the list of uh, teams that are potentially uh, a good match for you. So you can explore first. And next. Uh, so after you find your team, uh, what you can do is go through the project and team's documentation. Um, each team has their own documentation at, uh, this is the second in the bullet point, uh, and I mean the third one, the team handbooks are always located at make.wordpress.org slash team. Uh, it's either core design, something like that, and slash handbook. And this is where you want to get started with the team. And in case you are brand new to WordPress contribution or open source contribution, you can also visit Contributor Handbook and uh, Learn WordPress also has a great resource uh, in uh, the shape of uh, courses uh, called Contributing to Contributing to WordPress. So this is a self-guided study that you can go through. And um, yeah, uh, make sure that you check out this documentation first. Uh, it talks about the uh, community con code of conduct, uh, diversity, uh, and uh, statement, and privacy policy. So if you're the type of person you want to know everything at first, you can go through it at first, or you get familiar as you go. Uh, that helps you to be uh, a part of this community. And uh, next, please. Okay. And we also recommend connecting with the community, uh, not just um, contributing, 
by yourself, uh, it's best to do it with others. Um, there's always meetings uh, for the team that you can find the schedule here. Um, and some teams, uh, especially core team, has new contributor chats. So if you're just joining, uh, it's best to um, you know, just say hi and meet other new contributors so you can feel the community and then also get motivated as they go through the same journey as you are. Um, you can also, um, I think it meetups or, or mention there are meetups, sword camps, um, new generation events that are happening all over the world. Um, so I can't say for sure there will be other contributors, but uh, definitely the meetup organizers are contributors. So you can chat with them how you know they got involved or if they know any advice and just get connected. And as uh, Courtney mentioned, uh, it's a good networking um topic to talk about contribution because uh, people who are already doing um, do it for a reason that they like it, um, they have the skill. So it's a great connector to find uh, people that are interested in the same thing. And next, please. And uh, we also recommend creating your contribution habit. Uh, set aside consistent time for contribution, uh, even 15 minutes, 30 minutes, but do it at the same time and don't miss it. <laughs> uh, I have a friend in Japan, a contributor, who's uh, dedicating one hour on Friday to always translate something. And it's a great habit to build um, your um, you know, contribution consistency. And um, he brings along other people to join uh, on a Slack to just do it. Um, it's a, just a self contribution hour and it uh, kept them going and it's you know slowly growing the contributor base so you can encourage others and motivate others by uh, saying that I'm doing it and uh, actually doing it <laughs> every week so uh, those are the tips and uh, next please um, so what we definitely recommend is starting slow uh, figure out what's a good uh, skill match and what's your interest and do it long term, even at a small pace. Um, it doesn't have to be 5% in the beginning or even uh, ever because uh, just doing 5% for one week isn't as good as uh, doing it 30 minutes for a long, long term. So uh, the build up uh, leads to meaningful contribution. So we definitely recommend so start and long-term commitment. And next, um, and uh, this from here, I will have some recommendations for the companies that are sponsoring contributors, contributors in their uh, company. Uh, we recommend setting a strategy for the company. Uh, next one. Um, so you can always say, okay, here's a certain hour per week. You can contribute to anything you want. Uh, that's also appreciated, definitely. But sometimes that, that, that leads to burnout or not seeing the return of investment and they quit doing that because there needs to be some positive impact for the company for these uh, contributors to be spending that time because otherwise, you know, why do it? Uh, maybe because of the reason that you want to, them to do it, but uh, we want the companies to also uh, be benefited from the contribution. Otherwise, there's no uh, sustainability for them either. So uh, our recommendation or tips are identifying goals uh, for the contribution. What can you achieve through your members' contribution? You know, it's not like pushing agenda or anything like that, uh, but more like, you know, maybe you want to grow a certain skill for your employees or you want to be recognized as a, you know, contributing company, which, you know, those are great goals and identify those and know that uh, among the uh, business uh, and the contributors so that they are all aligned 
with the con and company values and um, teams. And uh, much employee skills, uh, even you want them to develop new skill, you know, make sure there's a good match uh, for the make team needs. And uh, identify high impact contribution areas within the make team, uh, which is, for example, you have your have a certain product that can, you know, create great feedback for certain part of WordPress. Maybe that's the high impact area instead of spending more time on, you know, something else that's uh, not aligned with your business. So think about what, what can be a high impact uh, for the WordPress and also for your company. Uh, what if you are a hosting company who is suffering from um, users um, asking lots of WordPress questions? Maybe you want to, you know, dedicate some time towards uh, clear documentation so that you can just always point people to there. So just think about, you know, what's a good match. Um, and again, allocated, dedicated weekly time for balanced and sustained contributions. Um, we know some companies spend uh, one Friday, whole Friday uh, of um, every month, or uh, I think it's every month, uh, they have a certain number of employees work on Five of the Future uh, contribution. That is a great way. It can be weekly time, it can be, you know, whole day in a month, um, make it uh, dedicated and regular uh, allocated time. Next. Uh, some companies host contributor day within the company. I think it just happened for Yoast, a plugin company. They do it um, and invite community people outside of uh, the company uh, employees. Uh, this is one way to do it. Maybe it's a one way, one day. So it's, you know, maybe there's a little bit of planning, but you don't have to make it the uh, um, uh, what weekly thing maybe this is a small way to start it so uh, think about a way that you can just get started and next uh after you start uh sorry scale up here, here are some tips for scaling up share learnings internally so not just uh, contributing uh maybe write a post about what you learned about wordpress or project or you know learning opportunities and note down contributions, uh, keep track. Uh, there's a way to keep track on the WordPress.org side from the uh, user profile, but it doesn't always, um, you know, stay on there. So maybe you might want to keep notes on what you've done and not pull uh, contribution to release, for example, should be, you know, uh, kept record. No, you should keep that record. And celebrate wins. If your employees do a great job, uh, it's great to, you know, even announce it, uh, mention it uh, to that person and publicly because uh, it will encourage other companies to uh, be inspired. Uh, also, share the knowledge with any the uh, company and an outside because uh, there's so little information about company contribution at the moment. So any experience that you um, think is valuable for other companies, it's a great way to um, you know, contribute to encourage other companies to do it. Um, many uh, experienced contribution companies start building a contribution team. So for example, Automatic, there are 100 people working full time to do WordPress.org contribution. And there are teams for, um, Courtney's team is for focused on learning, and my team is focused on, on contributors. So it's a good idea to break things down and have teams of people working on certain focused uh, goals. Um, yeah, some, and other tips, rotations is an idea. Uh, maybe bring in everybody to spend this month contributing and switch to another person. So rotation, uh, it doesn't have to be necessarily the same people. You can always edit the uh, profile to switch who is uh, the five for the future employees. And uh, 
if you're uh, so good with this experience, maybe uh, it's time to hire full-time contributors. they are contributors who are uh, looking for support of companies who want to be hired to do full-time uh, uh, contribution. Maybe uh, you should definitely talk to uh, us and figure out uh, who, who they are and or maybe you have uh, new people hiring and then you can hire someone who is already contributing. And yeah, that's a way to scale up. So there's always opportunity for companies to do more and be benefited from it. So next slide. Um, I think uh, this can be shared later, but uh, there are some companies that um have dedicated pages for contributing uh for WordPress. So we call it uh, like a showcase. Uh, they talk about which areas they dedicate their employees to or what are the wins, what are the um their experience are and it gets updated. So uh, I would recommend taking a look and who's doing uh interesting work and it's a good way to learn from others. And uh, yeah, I think it, maybe it's a good example of what you can do to share what you're doing. So um, yeah, we'll share the slides later. And uh, yeah, uh, we've been hearing some feedback uh, that 5% sounds really scary. It's a lot of work, a lot of time, but uh, I want to make sure that um, we know that five percent is aspirational, and any contribution is viable for WordPress's future. And next slide. Uh, so instead of focusing on five percent, let's focus on the future. That's what we are uh, here for, and it doesn't have to be exactly five percent. Uh, it sounds nice five for the future, but five percent is just the you know. Uh, the representation of small percentage of what you do and that should be dedicated to WordPress's future if you are interested in you know sustaining this project. Okay. And the uh, uh five to future uh has some future uh ideas and plans and I'll have a list of things here. So even though we're getting better and better at recording some types of contribution and showing them to the uh, each user's profile page, it's not all recorded yet. So we need to do more of that uh, to make sure that small contributions or um, unrecorded contributions always show up. Uh, we also need to do a little bit of a better job of onboarding new pledges. So if you are just signing up now, uh, unfortunately, not much happened <laughs> right after it. So we need to um, do more like email or uh, documentation, that kind of things, uh, which is also next one, uh, resources for companies is needed. And uh, we've been hearing a lot about um, not knowing what to work on, which is, you know, what's the priority for each team? What's the uh, areas that uh, contribution is needed? Um, it takes time for um, contributors to find out unless you're, you know, very uh, deep into the project. So that's the area that we need to improve to make sure anybody can find what is needed to be uh, worked on. And that's the area we want to make uh, an improvement to make the pledges have interested work to have an impact on the work. So uh, in the future, uh, we hope sponsor contributors are supporting volunteer contributors, um, helping out and uh, doing the, sometimes it, it's uh, sponsor, the work contributors doing small work that's not uh, super fancy or recognized, but uh, keep the uh, project going. So. I hope we'll encourage more uh, individual contributors by having a good base of sponsor contributors doing their work. Okay, and uh, Courtney will wrap it up. Yeah, so 
I know we've thrown a lot of information and links at you. So we have um, all these resources listed out in these slides. Um, so we will share a link to these slides in the meetup events comments. Um, so make sure you check back for that. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll include these links in the resources, all the links that were shared previously. Um, and there's a lot for you to, to check out. Um, and that's it for the content that we had to share with you today on um, about five the future in contributing. Um, so we wanted to thank you for being here with us today. Um, and also feel free to ask any questions uh, in the chat. Um, I did see one or two go by, so um, I would like to scroll down, uh, scroll back up to, to find those. Um, but we have our contact information here if you have any questions um, or just want to reach out. Um, we'd love to help you along your contribution journey. Um, so I do remember earlier that Aaron asked a question about um, the average hours that someone spends making a pledged contribution. Um, that's a good question because it varies, right, Nelko? <laughs> yes. So based on uh, this was uh, before WorkCamp US, um, the number is about 5.9 hours is the average uh, company sponsored um, mm -hmm. contributors hours. And I have more actually. Uh, mm. So yeah, this is interesting. Average number of employees is 4.49. So the minimum is one. The companies that uh, contribute to 1%. And there are, I think, 100. Uh, Automatic is uh, the largest uh, body of contributors. So it varies. It's, you know, but by average, it's about 4.5. So, hmm. yeah. Good to know. Yeah. Cool. Um, just scrolling back to see if there's any other questions. It's all the links that we shared with you. Are there any other questions or um, you want to share any, an experience, contribution experience with us? Um, Nathan says, I think my biggest hesitation comes from a friend who tried to contribute, but his code was consistently rejected and it was a frustrating experience for him. Mm -hmm. hmm. This was a while ago, so things may have changed. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is one area we are also trying to tackle, which I, I didn't mention, but uh for the next release, uh not I mean not the next release, but next release cycle, because we are already into uh five point four, a uh, six point four release cycle, but six point five, uh we are going to run a cohort of um, mentorship uh, program for new contributors. And core team uh, is planning to have more workshops or um, you know uh, onboarding uh, with the real you know uh, code uh, experience. So mm -hmm. it, I think it, it would be a good idea to look into that. Um, and yeah, uh, for example, uh, Courtney's team uh, training team also has a guide program, right? Mm -hmm. So that's right. Yeah. yeah, we um we we started the guide program. Um, Tina is one of our um, new contributors that went through the guide program recently. Uh, it's a brand new thing. So if you're interested in contributing to the training team, um, it you know there's a lot of no code contributions, but there are opportunities for code contributions to uh, the training team, which mainly focuses on learn.wordpress.org. Um, so yeah, yeah, every team um, has different kinds of um, focus focuses <laughs> mm -hmm. that um, that folks can contribute to. Um, like I said, there are plenty of no code contributions and um, there are lots of ways for you to contribute back to WordPress. Yeah, uh, and difference? something I've heard is that uh, this isn't code specifically, but um, it's a good idea to also look for areas of contribution where um, you can have start small. Uh, for example, there's uh, needs for block content creators, block it, uh, themes, block 
uh, patterns and blocks. So those are like small component compared to uh, core, which is uh, required to have like very high standard and uh, lots of complexity related to everything else. So we need to definitely help new contributors find those areas that they can um, uh, succeed uh, from mm -hmm. the beginning. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you for, for sharing, Tina. Like we, we're glad to hear that. Um, it's been a good experience for you. So, especially since uh, the guide program is new. Yeah. Any other thoughts, questions? I shared a link to uh, the mm. contributor mentorship program uh, that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So we don't have the next uh, cohort call for, you know, co contributors, but we will announce something here if anything is updated. Mm. And that will be for... Um... That'll be next year, right? Yeah, um, early next year. Early next year, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Good to know. So if we don't have any more questions or comments, um, we'll wrap up a couple of minutes early, a few minutes early. Um, if you think of anything that you want to ask us in the future, our here's our contact info. Um, pretty easy to find on the making wordpress slack as well so um yeah reach out if uh anything comes up for you and thanks for joining us again today thank you tina